Hello everyone. So a student asked me how to build the cloth of the outer layer of the character over here. And then so I think she's talking about this few parts of the character. And then the I think it would be good to create a separate parts of the mesh before joining them together at a later stage. So uh probably a simpler way I look at it is uh, this part should definitely be a one separate mesh and this part should probably be another separate mesh so at least two separate mesh and then this part will also be um, another separate mesh and then this this will join to the second area over here so that's how I would do it and later at, at this uh, red area over here I'll try to join them together so by having some separation, you will have a better idea of how to do it. And then um, also keeping in mind, so probably I'll split this into like maybe five shapes, you know, one, two, three, four. Then so maybe four or five shapes like this. Okay, so um, I also have some static shape. So I'll have a static shape inside here. So just as a placeholder. And then I have one sphere over here. So I would I would model this cloth as if um uh, it is it has been posted. So as if uh I'm getting this ready after uh transpose master, after my character already has the cloth, and then the cloth will just lay on top like this. So the uh procedure I will do is one sphere and then I'll create this uh center cloth area here with the winkles. So this I'll call it the core area of the cloth, which is very important. This is really super important. The core area of the cloth, I'll put in all the wrinkles there. And then later, I'll just stretch it out to whatever shape it will be. So the whole stretching out is very simple pro process. But uh, maybe a lot of beginners think that the cloth is very difficult. So they do the whole thing and then they keep going over and over. But actually, you just need to worry about the center part, the core area of the cloth. And then later, we just spread out to the rest. So just make sure the details here, are you have some nice details there. And then you stretch it out and then it's going to look good. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I have this uh, sphere. And then as I mentioned to you just now, I'll add in a cloth on top, so I'll pan a cube. Okay, I'll make this cube thin, and then make it bigger, and put it on top here like this. Okay, so I'll make this the, the core area of the cloth. Okay, so something like this. So keeping in mind, I'm trying to just work on this part here, and then later I'll stretch it out. Okay, so there's this other tutorial. They also put in the description uh, by, um, sorry, I didn't put his uh, name, but I'll add it in the description. So he, he's talking about XYZ of adding folds, and then it's super cool. So you see the different folds, you will end up with X, Y, and Z patterns. And then he's uh, masking them and doing an inflate and then smoothing them out all the way. So I'll recommend you to check out this tutorial also. Uh, anyway, it's a very good idea. So. Um, I'm also going to do that. So you, I'll do a dynamesh to this cube with just one to eight resolution. And then I'll use my number six brush. And I'll do a add my intensity a bit higher. So I'll do a X, a Y, and a Z. Okay, I want to make it a bit closer together. X, Y, Z. Okay, I can smooth it a bit. I can do again X. Just want to make sure my patterns go a bit deeper. And you want you also want to check out some cloth um references. Just make sure they look cool. 
Okay, so I kind of smooth it out a bit and then I also make sure that it looks it goes a bit deeper. So I have some XYZ stretches. Then the, I want to finish it up to the rest of the areas. Maybe over here I'll add some. Go in, come out, go in, come out, go in, come out. All right. So we have something like this, which is cool. And then we are just going to pinch it down like this. Okay. So we now we have the core area of the cloth almost done. Oh, and then you can tell I didn't spend too much effort on it yet. Okay. And then I'll just stretch it up. So the stretching part I'll say is the most important so far. Stretch it up. And then so the center part of the cloth, right? We want this to follow the shape. Of the static object that you have. So I'm simulating the static object as the lower part of the body right now. And then I'll just use a very big snake hook brush. Make sure your dynamic is uh, off. So if it's on, you double click it. So the snake hook will be super big. You need a really big snake hook to deal with cloth. Oh, you need a very big move brush to deal with cloth. And then uh, it's like the most one of the most important things that you really know how to shape cloth and then I'll just pinch the cloth at the center. <clears throat> now set, set so you, as you can tell the just now the the design that you added to the to the to the core of the cloth, the center part of the core, uh, is being replicated to the outside and then I'm not trying to you know, use my number six brush to shape my cloth here. You can do so, but just the, let the snake hook do the work for you because when it is being shaped, right, your snake hook is kind of moving all this naturally, the, which is kind of how cloth works. So it just flows together with gravity, stretches, it goes down, and it forms the shape depending on how your setting object looks. Oh, then it just forms a cloth right there. Oh, and then if you want it to be stronger or you want it to be smoother, you go ahead and smooth it. And then so some areas you can let it be smoother, some areas you can leave it to be more sharp. And then you can go back in and uh, add alterations to it. But remember, less is more. You, know? you, don't, you want to keep those lines straight. Now you want to have this cloth kind of effect to it. You don't want to overdo it, so you don't want to go in and add, you know, so like very tiny, small details, and then you think that uh, you are making it better, but actually it's worse. So sometimes just take note that you may make it worse. Then uh, if you didn't make it better, just uh, you let the gravity do the work for you. If you can't make it better, and then the, a lot of time I just feel like most of the work is done during the. <laughs> Call process, you see, like, uh, like, the when the call goes well, and then I stretch it, and then it's already done. I don't even need to do much. And then if your call doesn't go well, you might as well just redo it. Uh, better than you go in and try to nitpick a little bit one by one. You see, if it works well, right, you can just add on to it, and then it will look more natural. You know, I so now I'm just adding on a little bit more to it to just finish up the feel of how I think the cloth would be. And also depending on how the model will look, you can lasso it. Okay, so height point did it hidden close hole? So you just shape it to be more like this. Just chop it up. Then uh, you can do it for the other side. Chop it up. Invert height point did it hidden close hole. Oops, so it's closed uh, pretty thin over there. You'll just do a redyne mesh. High point, high point, did it hit and close her? Huh? Oops. Yeah, 
is better. So chop off more if you need to. Don't don't be uh, don't be fixated on one single part here. And of course, uh, if you want to add holes to it, I've mentioned it before. You can um, use some IMM brushes. So this uh, model doesn't have those holes, but sometimes you may have holes on your model. And then you can press alternate when you create these uh, objects. So they become um, boolean on the sub two, and then I'll just redynamesh them. So they will create a hole into the, the mesh. Okay, but I'm not going to do that, so I'll just undo it. Okay, so I hope you learned something. So you do the same method. So I have another cloth over here. So maybe I'll do another one on top, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.